Well, hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about another artisan pens pen. <laughs> so I, I've mentioned before I'd kind of like to have a pen from each continent. Uh, thanks to artisan pens, I now have a pen from Australia. Now I have two pens from Australia. I'm still waiting on Antarctica. And I thought I had a line on one from Africa, but it was sold before I could buy it. Doggone it, because it looked pretty. So this is an Artisan Pens Cigaro Red Ring. And, uh, well, let's take a look at it. All right, so this is the Artisan Pens Cigaro. Now, uh, pay attention to that red ring there, because I think JPL likes rings. Why? Because I purchased an Artisan Classic from him. Has it been a year now or two years? I don't know. My time scale's all sorts of screwed up on this whole COVID thing. But it has a ring too. So I'm not really interested in comparing the two pens. Um, you know, this one has a Bach double broad nib. Uh, it's made out of ebonite and then has this lacquer. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember my review of that pen, I did not like the lacquer. So I'm happy to see JPL has uh, gone against the lacquer thing, and he's embraced acrylic and dust. But the dust is my fault. So uh, I do see it seems to be a slightly translucent acrylic. I don't know if with my goofy lighting you can see it, but you can kind of see the threads in there. So we'll unscrew it. Oh yeah, he's got lots of threads in that cap. Oh, actually, it is kind of a thin cap. I don't know, you know, how strong or flimsy. I don't want to break it on air. But anyway, it reveals. What kind of nib is that? That he's no longer using Bach nibs. He's gone for Iridium Point Germany, which would lower the cost. Uh, a pretty standard plastic feed that I've found in a lot of my modern pens. And then when I go to unscrew the section, oh, oh, what, what, it doesn't unscrew? Is it a piston filler? No. Uh, he actually has it designed, which I've never seen on a pen before, so it unscrews in the middle of the section. To reveal, you know, a nice converter. Uh, now, one other thing worth noting here is the black on the nib. Supposedly, it's dip tested. Well, he inclu included a note written with the nib. So, artisan pen. So, he's got his own stationery uh, line now. Cigarro red ring. The nib is broad. The ink is Noodler's Black. I used to use Noodler's Black. Um, I hope you like the broad Asian style. It's been so long since I ordered it. I don't remember what that means. Nib that was ground by hand for you. And then he's got some marker doohickeys. And a quick, drum, a quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Um, okay, sorry, drawn a, a quick blank there. I know I didn't order it that long ago. But it has been a while. So he must have made this ahead of time and just pulled it off the shelf. And then, I don't know if his name is public or not. So, you know, make up your own favorite things for uh, JPL. Let's just clean the nib off a bit here. We'll just run water through once or twice. I'm assuming, hoping, that the pen is clean. Uh, one thing I will say, it didn't arrive with all the annoying packaging like his the last one did. So, you know, I said on that video I could have done without all that. Because it wasn't very good anyway. The only thing I liked out of it was this. That I, whoops, there goes the cap. No clip on it. The only thing I liked out of that packaging was this. A item that I still use to this day. But you don't get that with this pen. So we'll set our water aside and get some nice Parker washable blue quink. Oops, there's a little water there. Should we get a pretty decent fill on the first go, but 
let's just make sure. Not so good on the second go, but I think that was my fault. I'm sucking a little air down there. We'll slow down. There we go. Nice dosing of Parker Quink Washable Blue. What am I going to do when I run out of this bottle? I'll have to switch to something else. It looks like I'm saying that this pen is really bad apples, but I meant to, uh, that means broad Asian. Uh, Parker Quink. Washable blue. Ooh, okay, that's just nasty. We'll see if it does that again, or if that was just a one-time kerfluffle. Washable blue. If it does that again during this video, I may be a little upset. Um, flex? I doubt it. This is a steel nib, and... You know, some of them are flexy, but I kind of doubt this one is. No, not really. I'm not actually seeing a whole lot of line variation either, so I'm not sure how Asian-y it is. I don't, like I said, I should look, see what Asian means. Wetness and flow. Maybe you'd like to see it. I didn't do too badly keeping up, but, you know, with that eruption I had up here, what do you expect? Uh, I'm not getting another eruption. I'm just going to do something naughty here. Okay, I'm not, don't pound when you do that, but I was just curious if it would splash a bunch of ink out, and it, I got one drop. So, that's not bad. Um, what's around here that I could show you an example with that? I uh, was doing that with one of my dependable elderly pens this week because I... Did that seriously just leak? And yeah, I did. I did this and just bloosh all over the paper. So here's an elderly pen that's due for review. See? That's how they should act. They should keep tight hold of their ink. Uh, do I have another inked pen over here? No. So we'll just go with that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Another custom-made dealio. A wing sung something or other, but with a custom-made nib that doesn't fit perfectly. I should have done this during his video, because look at that. That passed that test of flying colors. And shouldn't. So, <laughs> back to uh, JPL's pen. Wetness and flow. Let's do a little bit of a smear test. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a wet one. In fact, I've got the feeling I'm going to put something fun in it next time I fill it instead of this Parker Quink washable blue. <laughs> ah, reverse rating. Maybe this will be what makes it Asian. You know, very dry, but surprisingly smooth. And finally, the world-famous Pierre Gustafson test. Started adding my own sound effects. We don't need that. We got our own, doggone it. So, pass that one with flying colors. So, I like it. Um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if it burps again, but, uh, I like it. <laughs> so that's the Artisan Pens Red Ring Cigarro. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I think, uh, JPL made some good choices as, uh, compared to his initial, was it a Kickstarter or Indiegogo, something like that, offering of the Artisan Classic. Uh, I think not doing the spray paint lacquer, good choice. Um, I think, you know, going with the acrylic, I'm ambivalent on that one. You know, uh, I think it worked with this pen, but uh, doesn't have to be. 
Uh, I think it's a uh, good quality, and I think that red ring is kind of subtle. It sort of reminds me of a a pen I had my eyes on a few years ago, but never bought. It was a was it a Franklin Kristoff? Somebody had like a special edition pen on uh, Anderson pens that had a just a little blue ring on it, and I just thought, wow, that really sets it off. I'd love to own it, and then couldn't talk myself into it because even back then I was getting into vintage and not so much modern pens. But anyway, I think the overall good design choices. The uh, opening in the middle of the section's a bit weird, but you don't feel it. So, you know, if it makes good design sense, why not? Doesn't bother me any. Uh, I think uh, some people won't like it not having a clip. You saw me chase it around my desk a little bit. But uh, on the whole, I think it's a good pen. Uh, Time will tell how well it lasts. You know, I haven't decided it. The cap feels a little flimsy, but that could be just my brain. So uh, we'll see. He did opt to go for a different type of nib instead of the Bach nibs. And uh, I'll be honest, I think it was a measure to make the pens lower cost. Uh, with the grinding, I mean, I thought it was fine. I, I didn't notice anything particularly special about it as far as being an Asian broad but you know it wrote just fine and I liked like I said that he included a handwritten note written with that pen and the ink was still on the nib so I could tell it had been dip tested apparently so overall I'm happy with it I'm curious to see you know he's young he's just starting out in this business so I'm curious to see what he does with it I'm uh you know, there's a lot of potential there. Some people uh, have really taken off with this type of artisan type work because this is more, uh, you know, this isn't a mass produced pilot custom 823. I mean, this is more an individual thing. Uh, as he gets more tools and things and more skill, who knows what, what, what he'll end up building. So uh, anyway, I'm curious to see what he does with it. And I don't know if he's doing this full time. I think he's out of college, but I don't know if this is somehow full-time or if he has a job plus this which that's my guess so we'll have to see i should mention if you want to buy pens from him he has a store on etsy i'm not shilling at all because i'm not getting anything for this I, he probably doesn't know i exist anyway i i will put a link to his storefront just because it's not something you just go to any pen seller and buy so i want to thank you for watching we'll talk to you later Bye-bye.